Hi all, Retro Tech Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. We're glad you're here. So once again, somehow it's the month of December, which means it's time for December. That's right. This is an event where retro YouTubers get together and create videos about DOS. So today, I'd like to look at double space and drive space and look at some of the similarities and some of the differences between these two programs. Double space was first introduced with DOS 6.0 as a drive compression program after competition was received from other flavors of DOS that were including similar utilities. Subsequently, Microsoft got sued for including double space due to some patent infringement issues. And further along in DOS 6.22 introduced a replacement called drive space. Well, today I'm going to show you how to set up and configure these two different disk compression programs. Then we'll look at some performance aspects of them. And then finally, I'll show you how to uninstall them just in case you didn't want them installed on your machine. And as you can see behind me, I do have the setup program for drive space loaded up on my 486 DX4100, but I know better. I lost data back in the day, so we won't be doing this on real hardware, but rather virtual hardware. So without further ado, let's have a look. So the first thing I needed to do was set up two virtual machines. I set up one based on DOS 6.0 and the other based on DOS 6.22. And as far as installation, so that we could have some files, I used my standard Windows 3.11 virtual machine environment. I figured that would give us enough files to perform some copying, compressing, and comparing. So after virtual machine setup, I am launching double space in the DOS 6.0 virtual machine. Express setup and C to compress, and check disk gets launched. Remember, in DOS 6, there was no scan disk. So after a system restart, we can see the compression begin and the time left to get progressively better. All in all, total time was 4 minutes and 29 seconds to compress when all was said and done. Not too bad, I presume. After compression, double space launched Defrag. And this is such a soothing thing to watch, so we'll let it go for just a minute or so. You can see everything run here. A total time of 1 minute and 16 seconds, and everything is nicely defragmented. Ah, so peaceful and soothing. Nice to see. Perfect. So from there, some resizing is done, and we'll see some statistics. More on that in a minute. And double space will restart the computer. So here we are restarting as a double space compressed system. Next, we can have a look at the size. And we can see here that we can make some adjustments, but we do have a total of 134 megabytes free on the uncompressed drive and about 100 megabytes free on the compressed drive for what it's worth. So next, let's run drive space on the 6.22 VM. And notice we are prompted to back up our data. Microsoft learned from double space. And also a surface scan is done. Yes, make sure your disk is not defective first. A good lesson. From there, the system does restart and compression begins. Five minutes and 50 seconds to do the compression. And you can see the time for estimation get better and better as time marches on. Not too shabby, I guess, but a little slower than double space. More on that in a minute. From there, of course, we have to launch Defrag. And here we see it starting to work. So soothing, as usual. And this does take 2 minutes and 11 seconds. Slower than. Double space once again, but less fragmented, it seems. And with that complete, we get some metrics. More on that in a minute. And some changes are made to autoexec bat and config sys, and it's time to restart. So here we can see we are restarting and we can also look at the size command that we looked at prior in double space and we can see that we have 143 megabytes free on the uncompressed drive and 103 megabytes free on the compressed. And once again, this can be adjusted. So looking at the system mechanics, we'll start with drive space. If I go to drive H, you can see that we have various files. We have a double space bin, a drive space bin, a drive space.000, which is a huge file which contains all of our data, and an INI file. We'll go ahead and crack open the INI file. It talks about the number of removable drives, the last drive, file fragments, and some other various items here. I think that last line for activate drive is what's important to ensure that indeed we have a bootable and usable drive. The double space setup is similar, but instead of drive space files, we have a double space bin, a double space INI, and a huge double space.000 file. So pretty much similar, yet different. 
Another thing to note, you'll see that I actually have a boot up version of DOS 6.22 here. That's because I wanted to show that you can indeed access double space volumes if you boot from a DOS 622 floppy disk. And here you can see I put the metrics in a nice easy to read table and clearly double space is faster than drive space when it comes to compression time and defrag time. It's about 25% faster in fact. Granted, this is a sample size of one, but in my case, it was indeed faster. So now let's have a look at performance. I'll start with write speed. I've copied about 130 megabytes of installation data onto this volume copying from another disk that is uncompressed. Double space completed in about 51 seconds, but drive space took 67. Our trend for performance is continuing to track. However, for read speed, where I copied the same amount of data from this volume to another, it was about 19 seconds. So, let's also take a minute and look at uncompressed speed. For uncompressed speed, it actually only takes 24 seconds to copy the same amount of data. Wow! That's quite the performance hit for using double space and or drive space as compared to having an uncompressed volume. We can also look at resident memory footprint and drive space uses 39 kilobytes of conventional memory. If we look at double space, it uses slightly more at 43. So not a big difference, but every kilobyte counts in MS-DOS. So here we have all of our metrics and clearly drive space wins when it comes to resident memory. However, if we look at compression time, defrag time, and write speed, double space is the clear winner, at least in my sample size of one. And if we look at read speed and compression ratio, it's a dead heat. So there's at least one case where there's a tie or equal performance between double space and drive space. And finally, as I noted earlier, if we look at the compressed versus uncompressed, Using double space versus uncompressed is 213% slower than just using an uncompressed drive. And drive space is 279% slower. Ouch, hardware was very expensive back in the day, but I'm not sure I would have used discompression if I could avoid it. And the fact that I'm using discompression in a virtual machine should really tell you something because I too experienced issues with data loss using double space back in the day. So given my little rant, I should show you how to uninstall. For drive space, it's easy. Tools, uncompress, and then yes, assuming that you have cleared enough space off your volume. From there, scan disk will be conducted to ensure you have no defective sectors. And from there, we run defrag. And we run drive space defrag, which is incredibly slow and actually took upwards of an hour to complete on its first pass. From there, we uncompress some more files we defrag some more, but the whole process is automated, and before long, we can reboot and notice that we no longer have a drive H. We are successfully uncompressed. For double space removal, it's a different story. Under DOS 6.0, there's no uninstall feature, but that was corrected in DOS 6.2. So what do you get to do? Well, you get to copy files from drive C to drive H. Then you get to delete files from drive C. And then you get to run a double space size command or size via the GUI. And when requested, you have to defrag. Here you can see me using the GUI to resize drive C. I since learned you can do it from the command line. More on that in a minute. You can see this nice article here, which shows you all of these suggested steps for uninstalling double space, which includes the size command. In any event, I went about it the hard way first. And before long, you can hopefully get everything where you need it to be. I'll tell you though, after a while, I simply gave up. I lost track of what I had moved and what I hadn't moved. And I eventually decided that I was done and just went ahead and deleted double space. We'll see that here. Restart the system and we will no longer have a drive H. So sometimes you just give up. All right, that's what I had for you today. Hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed making this video and learning about the differences between double space and drive space. If you're not subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? There's a button somewhere over there that you can press and subscribe. I'd love to have you. And if you liked what you saw today, please give us a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. As always, it's been great having you along for the retro journey. I look forward to seeing you next time. I wish you a very happy dos -sember. And that's pretty much it for now. So, bye for now.